Hello everybody, my name is Alessandro, I'm the product design manager at Mozilla and I'm making this video as a direct continuation of a previous video I made in which I briefly explained the history of Thunderbird, the struggles we're facing due to technical depth and the plans to modernize it and make it more accessible. I decided to show my face because a lot of the comments in the previous video were like, you're just a kid that doesn't know anything, uh, but even if I look beautiful and young, I'm actually 40 years old. So thank you for calling me a kid, but that's not a problem, it doesn't matter. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you what our plans are for the folder pane. We're gonna just exclusively focus on the folder pane instead of looking at the whole UI. And I'm gonna do a series of video to highlight and showcase all the things that we're doing in small sections. So it's easier to explain and it's easier to go in depth and, and have a better, more thorough explanation, um, as well as why we're trying, like how we're trying to improve the usability and accessibility of all of its features. So yeah, let's get started. First of all, let's take a look at the current folder pane. This is a screenshot from version 102, the current ESR. Pretty standard, as you can see, we have the email account as the parent item with underneath all its folders. Moving down, we can find the local folders. And if you add another account, it will appear underneath, but you can reorder them from within the account settings. Now let's take a look at what this will look like in version 115. Check this out. Look how breathable everything is. So much white space. Look at that. Look at how big these buttons are. Look at the white space. Look at it. The old interface is gone. Embrace the wastefulness. Are you already freaking out? I'm sorry. I did it on purpose and I lied to you. The screenshots that you're seeing are actually from the same exact version, our current alpha build. This is what the folder pane actually looks like in 102 which is unsurprisingly identical to the first screenshot I showed you. So what is this other screenshot? That's one of the many ways you can customize the folder pane if you don't like the way it looks. So let's analyze all the things you can control and why we decided to add these options. First, the density variation. We know that many of you love the super tight and compact UI, but we also know that many users can't stand how everything is cramped and squished together. So who's right? Everyone is. There's no right or wrong answer. Just different people have different needs. From the main app menu, you can quickly switch the density and set the settings the way you find them more comfortable. Also underneath it, there's an easy option to control the font size. Isn't the new app menu pretty good? I'm gonna talk about that in another video. I personally like the default density setting, so instead of compact, I'll choose that. That's why in the second screenshot, there are less information on the screen, there's more space, just because I changed the density to uh, default settings instead of a compact, but that does not mean that you cannot keep the compact. The compact is still there. We actually expose it more in the app menu, so it's all good. The other thing is folder modes. Many of you will already be familiar with the various folder modes that we currently support, like the favorite, unified, unread, etc. What you're looking at is simply the new unified folder mode, which doesn't show the separated accounts, but handles everything within common virtual folders. Viewing from which account an email is coming from is already available in the message pane, but we're also improving that. Uh, I'm gonna showcase the new message thread and the message pane in another video. That's gonna be very interesting as well. For those users that have only one account or don't care about accessing the folders of each of their accounts separately, the unified mode reduces the amount of folders in the pane and reduces the cognitive burden. As you can see, this type of mode is very familiar with something you can find on a web mail like Gmail or ProtonMail or even FastMail. So it's familiar for those users coming from a web mail point of view. But this is just a mode, it's a customization. If you don't like it, you can switch back to your regular mode or actually don't even switch back because the default is most likely gonna be what you expect. Not everyone will like this, that's why it's optional and easily changeable. Let's talk about the header. Some users rely on the top toolbar for their action buttons, and that's always been the default location for all the main actions of our current tab. 
Others prefer to completely remove all buttons from the toolbar and rely exclusively on the menu bar to access options and features. Other users completely hide both menu bar and toolbar and interact exclusively with shortcuts. These situations are just a few examples of how different users like to change the interface to feel more productive and more easily find the options that they need when they need it. That's why we're aiming at offering more easily discoverable contextual options for specific areas. That's where the folder pane header comes from. Using a primary button to highlight the most important action in the current context, which is writing a message, is a common user experience paradigm that helps to guide the users in focusing on simple and common actions. Adding the button in the folder pane makes it easily accessible for users that rely on assistive technologies to navigate exclusively with a keyboard, because that button is not on a separated context in a separated toolbar on top outside of the folder pane. Everything is there. It's much more accessible. In the same area, we also added a button to fetch messages from the server, the common get messages that you have in the current toolbar. At the end of the area, we offered a meatball menu, that's called a meatball menu, it's super cute, that allow users to access options to change the layout of the folder pane, switching folder modes, showing or hiding local folders and tags, and many more options that normally would be hidden inside some sub-menu of the menu bar. Let's remember that some users don't use a menu bar, they're not well-versed with a menu bar, some users that hide it completely. So sh shoving all those options inside the menu bar and only there is not that discoverable. As usual, if you don't care about this at all and you hate all this waste of space, you can just click hide and that preference will be remembered forever in your profile so you will not see that message header at all anymore. About local folders and tags. Also, these parts of the folder pane are completely optional and in some cases kind of foreign for some users. New generation that have only been using web mails and simple interfaces never used a local folder and don't even know what that is. So offering a simple option to turn it on or off was a no brainer to add. On the same vein, but slightly different, is the access to tags, which are basically labels filtering your emails and behave a lot like virtual folders. If you select a tag, you end up with a subset of messages that have that tag, which is like looking at a folder with the same tag name. Some users might prefer having the tag buttons in the toolbar as is it the default or not using tags at all, while others heavily rely on tags. Therefore, adding an option to show them in the folder pane will be very beneficial because the action of filtering your messages and accessing specific messages in specific folders, it's identical to selecting a tag. The behavior is exactly the same. All of these sections, like your accounts, are of course reorderable. So if you are a heavy email user with many custom folders, custom filters, tags, and accounts, you can reorder items, show them, hide them the way you want and create your own favorite folder list and make it look like the way you prefer. Once again, reiterating, just to be clear, all these things that I'm showing to you are optionals and they're aimed to accommodate users that don't find the current Thunderbird interface comfortable. But that doesn't mean we're forcing you to tag along. You can keep the way it was before, absolutely. So at this point, you might ask what changed? Why uh, Thunderbird already has all these features through add-ons or by tweaking a little bit the code? Why are we wasting so much time in rebuilding things that are already there if we wanna keep the same features that are already there and the same UI and guarantee the same exact look and feel that it's already there? What's the point of us rebuilding the code from scratch or rebuilding the UI from scratch? The answer that someone might not like is that because what it's already there, it's badly coded. It's not good. It's outdated, not scalable, not flexible, and it doesn't accommodate any further future addition. We're kind of stuck in technical debt. 
we needed to rebuild the folder pane from scratch in order to start from a clean and scalable code that allows us to add all the flexibility we need and you need and even more. Some users might feel comfortable tweaking the user chrome.css or change things or use various add-ons to change the look and feel, but other users, they don't even know what those are. So finding a good balance to make those sections easy on the eye for new user, feature rich and customizable, but also familiar and reliable for existing users was our main goal. Also, one thing that I want to make sure it's coming across as clear as possible, asking existing users to forget what they know and retrain their muscle memory would be absolutely terrible. All these options that we're adding, all these features that we're exposing should be more intuitive, easy to ignore, easy to change, but also we're not overriding what it's already there in terms of discoverability and usability. We're improving things. So what's the default? Uh, that's the tricky part, right? Because uh, we want to expose all these new options and features, but we don't want to alienate existing audience by forcing the new UI right in there. As soon as an update, everything changes, and then you have to spend 20 minutes just clicking, hiding, and tweaking the UI to roll back to what it was before. It's a bit annoying and it's a fine balance. It's difficult to achieve, but our goal is try to not break the user space. Our objective is to not change anything for existing users and upgrading from an older version to Thunderbird should maintain the UI as much as possible to a fidelity that it was the previous version. But then if a user creates a new profile, we can expose the new UI. We can, we can kind of assume that this is a new installation, so we want to expose the new things. This is not decided yet. We still don't know what would be the best action. We're also considering the possibility of showing one simple model dialog wizard, like a welcome wizard that asks the user if they want to try the new UI or keep the current one. That model pop-up should be just a single dismissible instance that doesn't end up bothering anyone. As I said, we're still deciding, we're still on the fence. Uh, we will need to do some A-B testing to see how things are received. But of course, if you have any ideas, please let me know in the comments below. So in conclusion, this is an honest message. Uh, once again, I apologize apologies for the beginning of the video that was a bit of a passive aggressive introduction but i wanted to make it the way to try to add a bit of silliness and laughter to any of you that is currently terrified about the, the potential of a massive fuck up from our part which is absolutely legit we might do things wrong it's absolutely fine i know saying please trust us is like shouting in the wind. Trusting a business nowadays is making the right decision feels like science fiction. Almost every company, especially tech companies, don't have the best track record in caring for the users and modern trends and silly hypes can easily destroy the beloved product in a matter of months. For what it's worth, we at Thunderbird actually care about our users. We care a lot. We care about what you think, and we feel bad when things don't work out, when features get broken, when things don't work, when bugs arise and we're not quick enough in fixing it. It's a horrible feeling and no one wants to feel that way. I'm already expecting some snarky comments of people say, oh, you care about fixing bugs, but this bug has been over for 20 years. That's a topic for another video. I will go through why some bugs are so ancient and we haven't fixed them yet, but apologies for that. We know it's absolutely terrible. And another point that I want to make sure that comes across clearly, as clearly as possible, we don't update or change things just for the sake of changing them. We need to rebuild a lot of things to guarantee the well-being of the product and make it stable and sustainable for the next 20 years. The way it is right now, it is not. We cannot just say, we're going to stop coding it, we're just going to maintain it. That doesn't work. If you ever worked in any tech company, you know that finished products don't exist, especially with web technologies. If you have a product that it's finished, 
after a while it's gonna break because things change. And as I explained in the previous video, we are part of a larger code base that we don't control. So when things change in Firefox, we need to follow along. And Firefox is deprecating a lot of things that we're using. So we need to rebuild. There's no other option. Also, little note, some people freaked out about Thunderbird going to Electron. That will never happen. Who, who said that? Like Electron? No. Ew. Yuck. Just get away. No. More videos will come highlighting all the major changes to other features like the main toolbar, the message thread, the account setup and so on. So I'm gonna do this hoping that these videos will be informative and interesting and will help mitigate the negative connotation whenever the user interface changes are mentioned. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.